One of the best things about being a scientist is getting to work with new folks from all over the world and learn about new cultures and languages. As a native English speaker, it's always amazed me how many scientists from non-English speaking countries could solve complex scientific problems and then communicate those solutions, both verbally and written, in a second language. That's always impressed me. So it's been great to learn that scientists with multilingual skills can capitalise and combine their knowledge of science and languages to work as medical translators in the pharma industry. Today we're going to learn about how to break into medical communications, a medical translation more specifically, and what does working as a medical translator actually involve? interested in a career in medical writing, you need to prove to employers that you have the core skills to present clinical research data in a clear and concise way. The most common way that employers assess this is through a writing test, which is an integral part of the interview process for the majority of medical writing roles. So what are employers looking for from a medical writing test? And how do you know what to include to ensure that you make a good impression on prospective employers? This can be tricky to answer if you're not yet familiar with writing test best practice. So to help address this, I've prepared a checklist of key things that you'll need to consider when preparing a medical writing test. To get a copy of this checklist, just head over to my site for a free download. You'll also receive regular updates on support for your career transitions, working in pharma and scientific and medical writing careers. Hi, I'm Vicky Sherwood, author of the Biomed Baddest blog and host of the YouTube channel where we discuss all things career related for STEM professionals working in academia and beyond. Today I'm joined by David Mendes. Some of you may know David as host of the popular podcast Papa PA which helps graduates and postdocs explore their employability by listening to the career journeys of other PhDs from around the world. But David also works in medical communications for the pharma industry, but with speciality on bringing his language skills to work on medical translation projects. I've had the opportunity to interview David and learn how he broke into medical communications and medical translation more specifically. I've learned about the types of projects he works on and the challenges he faces as a medical translator. So let's get started. Hi David, welcome to the channel. So excited to have you here. Why don't we get started, David? Tell us a little bit about how you decided to leave academia and branch out into industry. Sure, I'm super happy to be here. Thanks for, for the invitation. My transition was, it wasn't immediate right after my defense. I defended my PhD and right away I started looking for something. And actually the first job I got was in distance education. I was tutoring people who advanced in their in their school but needed some training to get to where they want, to the domain they wanted in university but that's that was for a little less than a year but I, I, I kept looking at where people from my institute were going and I started noticing that a couple of them they were going to this one company that it's a medical writing company here in Montreal called IC Axon and you know that kind of tickled my curiosity it's medical writing I don't really know what that is let's talk with them and see so th the first key thing was to start having conversations with people doing things that I found interesting and um it so happens that this company actively, and I don't know if it's if it still is, but at the time it was constantly and actively hiring people who had just finished their masters or, the, or their their PhD in you know anything life sciences, uh, uh, even um, biomedical engineering. Why? Because their clients were farmers. And what they produced was Salesforce training materials. So, you know, there's a, a new drug or a new indication for a drug. So there were modules to be written about the disease state, about the product landscape, you know, comp competitor landscape, objection handling, all those types of things. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is that, that um, this company, they had this whole like very like fine-tuned uh, onboarding process be, to be able to, to train people just after them after hiring them because they had learned what kind of tweaking was needed from when you when you come straight from the lab versus someone who has been in industry for a while in terms of language mostly because this was medical writing and, and I stayed almost five years at this company but the, the main first thing was talking with someone who did who came from the same place I did and who did something that sounded interesting and ask them mm -hmm. how's the today what is it what's expected of you what type of 
work you know and what type of product are you are you working on etc etc and then seeing if that interests you the culture was really let's create a system where we do get people straight out of the of the lab but quickly in three months get them up to speed as to you know letting go of some of that academic writing that there was a, a bunch of training that i had right at the beginning and then they actually continually there were like workshops on how to write right and citations etc etc <coughs> i think i was lucky to find an organization ready for my type for my type of candidate and i think it's i don't think it's true of every organization and of every company some of them really want you to come with experience and not having to train you too much but if you look around and if you see that people are, are getting higher around you that have the same profile well then it, it must mean that this or that company are maybe ready to to hire you too mm -hmm. and then it's just a question of preparing cv maybe the person who you know in there can hand the cv to to hr which is also always a good thing and then and then just follow the the moves <laughs> So from what you're saying, it really sounds like you were kind of in that medical education space, but now you work more in translation. So yes. how did that kind of transition happen? Uh, I had become senior medical writer and my responsibilities were, and that I actually enjoyed was like coaching new hires, etc. But I, I wanted something different. And then I saw that there was projects coming from a company, uh, a company's branch in Brazil. And then people were asking me, hey, David, uh, can you just check that this Portuguese is, is okay? <laughs> Those four years before, I wasn't aware that my other languages could be of interest. And this company, particularly all the projects I worked on was just in English, even though I'm in, I'm in Montreal. But then that was the first inkling of, oh, Portuguese. That, so this, there's something happening with, with Brazil and Brazil is a huge country, etc., etc. And that's that's when I kind of started thinking about it. And because I had this idea that I, ca I could work in the medical communications domain in language services, I started looking around. And again, a contact of mine said, oh, you know what? My company is not happy with their translator right now. Would you want to give it a try? And then it, it was like that. It was, again, kind of a lucky strike of when I was looking to to transition to work, to, to do something that I could do from home, because that was the, the key to be able to be more involved with the kids, etc. And this person says, they're going to be looking. And if I if I um, uh, recommend you, you know, they'll, they'll give you a try. And that's how uh, I got my first client. And, and it was kind of, it was freelance, but it was full time. <laughs> but the, the transition, the, the story of transitioning was that one was understanding, like, oh, this is possible. This exists. And then find the way to transition and then having this opportunity that uh, that ended up really opening the door for me main thing that I do is there's a slide deck mostly in translation I've been working with agencies that that um, do that work with universities and different stakeholders for um, CME continuing medical education and that's it I get stuff I get slide decks in English I get course materials in English that I need to translate to French and this is the largest part of, of what I do there's other things too I don't know if you no Medscape. They have mm -hmm. a French branch and I do transcription okay. for them, uh, things like that. It, it sounds as if there's a lot of work in this space for somebody mm -hmm. with your skills, you know, having scientific understanding, understanding medical communications and being trained mm -hmm. in that. And on top of that, being able to do the translation. But how much demand is there and how much competition is there in that area? The translation space is particular. It's sh is changing with, intel in, uh, you know, artificial intelligence coming in and, and you know, neuronal translation etc so the profession is is changing but yes i'm overbooked yes i refuse stuff and why again i don't know if it's particular I, i believe it's particular to montreal but maybe maybe uh, any anyway, maybe it's because i'm here and it's what i hear but my contacts have been for a while agency translation agencies and they always they always always have work for you Mm -hmm. Always. I work for one and uh, they ask you when they're they're trying to hire you onto their portfolio of translators and put you into their database. But there's an interviewing process. There's there's translation tests, etc. And one of the things they ask is, do you work on weekends? You know, okay. <laughs> because and, and I think I believe, you no, know, I actually I'd love to have your confirmation of this, but 
I've seen even when I was working in, in medical writing, the timelines for working with pharma teams, when you get to the comms portion is always short because, you know, there was the development, there was there's the, the commercial, this, that. And then when ev- all the messaging is, you know, is set in stone and say, okay, now write the material. It's always like, go, go, go. It's for yesterday. Anyway, that's the feeling I get. The trials yeah. finish and, and they know that's coming, right? But then there's like there's data analysis coming. and then they've got to get everything ready for the approval. Um, yeah. <laughs> and suddenly they want to get the message out to this big Congress that's happening, which is in like, oh, a couple of months, you know, and you've <laughs> yes. got to get everything together. So yeah, I can only imagine in the translation space, you've got all that medcoms being developed and then suddenly they want to get it into different markets. You may yes. have even less time. It's 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 always uh, it's always uh, short. Yeah. And, and that's why in the end, you need to be able to guarantee a certain speed uh, in, in your work. And this one thing I didn't mention is that I did do uh, in two years uh, a, a, a translation certificate because I, f- I felt not not imposter feelings, but I felt that I needed some training in, in some formal training in translation and translation theory and things like that. And also, you know what, when presenting myself as a translator to have some something, you know, concrete to mm-hmm. show people that I had made an effort to get into the industry, even though I had the whole different past. In French, you do need to learn a lot of the counterparts for some terms that are really French French. <coughs> if I had translated to Portugal, Portuguese, at least I, I know in Portugal, you use a lot of English terms. And so it wouldn't be so complicated. Whenever there's something technical, you have, you just go look, there's way to do it, ways to do it. Pharma's always have product monographs in one language and the other. So you can always, you know, you, there's always way, ways to, if you hit a term that you're uncertain and here, here in Canada, also the government sites, the government websites are always in, the, in both languages. So kind of the official translation of this or that term well you go to a government government website to the english version then you you just look at the french version you see how they did it and just you can emulate that but i've never had that type of difficulty again it's something that's come easy to me uh, in a way but i imagine someone uh, who's training like let's say i had done my university in translation and then i wanted to become a medical translator then i think it would take and here I, and i know that they exist like a master's in in scientific and medical translation because then things that you read they don't ring any bells but it just sounds like you know the job you do now is like yeah. the perfect merge of all your skill sets together and yes. quite a unique set right because you've got the science training you've got the medcons and you've yeah. got the language languages to do it so um you found a perfect niche in that way i think yes for me at least yes <laughs> it, it, it's it's kind of it fits naturally with, with me Thanks so much to David for sharing his insights into working as a medical translator and exploring his career path of how he got there. Here's a summary of some of the key takeaways from what David said. Firstly, I really related to how David launched his medical communications career using his contacts because I did exactly the same, but his contacts also helped him further develop his career and break into medical translation as well. Secondly, through this networking approach, he was able to find companies that were willing to invest in his initial training. Then, when working as a medical translator, you have to be able to guarantee a certain speed to your work in order to meet tight deadlines. And finally, there are lots of opportunities for multilingual medical writers to work in translation services for the pharma industry. The great news is that this is a space with plenty of work for experienced medical translators. (laughs) 